Hey everyone, welcome back to Child of the Kingdom's YouTube page. Thank you all for coming back. So today I wanted to do a video and I wanted the video or the series that I'm about to be starting to be centered on women of the Bible. I feel like I really wanted to do this because through my research and through my um, desire of wanting to learn so much more about women in the Bible, seeing as I am a woman and because anything in scripture can be applied to our daily lives. Um, I was looking around and I just seen a lot of things about Ruth, a lot of things about Esther, and a lot of things about the Proverbs 31 woman. These women are excellent women and th those scriptures are still very valid, but I feel like sometimes when we look a little bit deeper and we kind of just look in between, you know, the lines or just more in depth, we can learn a lot more as well. So I wanted today to talk about Tamar. Um, Tamar can be found in Genesis chapter 38. The entire chapter is pretty much her role and her story, um, if that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today so I'm going to first read Genesis chapter 38 I might skip a couple of verses but again Genesis chapter 38 anytime you are ready to read that you can go ahead and check that out but I'm just going to read um, and, and touch on the points that I want to share with you guys today so let's just get started so let's just begin with Genesis 38 verse 1 and I read the NLT version New Living Translation and that's what I'm going to be reading now, and you'll see the scripture on the screen somewhere. So about this time, Judah left home and moved to Adullam, where he stayed with a man named Hira. There he saw a Canaanite woman, the daughter of Shua, and he married her. And when he slept with her, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and he named the boy Ur. E -R. Um, then she became pregnant again and gave birth to another son, and she named him Onan. And when she gave birth to a third son... Um, she named him Sheila. In the course of time, Judah arranged for his firstborn son, Ur, to marry a young woman named Tamar. But Ur was a wicked man in the Lord's sight, so the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to Ur's brother Onan, Go and marry Tamar, as our law requires for the brother of a man who has died. You must, pr you must produce an heir for your brother. But Onan was not willing to have a child who would not be his own heir. So whenever he had intercourse with his brother's wife, he spilled the semen on the ground. This prevented her from being able to have a child um, who would belong to his brother. But the Lord considered it evil for Onan to deny child to his dead brother. So the Lord took Onan's life too. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, go back to your home, your parents' home, and remain a widow until my son Sheila is old enough to marry you. But Judah really didn't intend to do this because he was afraid Sheila would also die like his two other brothers. So Tamar went back home to live in her father's home. Um, I'm now stopping at verse 12. So let's get into this, shall we? We're going to go through the entire chapter, but I just kind of want to start off with this. So we can see, you know, as women, hopefully, or men, whatever gender you are, um, Tamar is a woman, so I'm just going to address women. Um, we go through a lot. Girls go through a lot. Females go through a lot. Um, it can be based on gender. There are different types of abuse, you know, oppression, not having a voice. There are so many things that even go on today in this century um, that are unfair and unjust towards the gender of being a female. Um, so we go through a lot. So I feel like this series is going to help a lot of people because we get to really learn from the different females and all the things they went through and kind of help us to guide us and teach us um, so that we can know what to do when we're going through certain things as well. So I read to you the story of Tamar. So we can see that during this time, um, we see that the scripture even tells us that Judah's wife had three sons and they list out the sons. We don't know if they had any daughters. They didn't say they had any daughters, but if they did, they weren't important because they weren't noted in the scripture. And that's something we kind of need to really focus on. During this time that this story even happened, women were not assets to a family. Women were not um, of any importance, really. Sons were glorified. Sons were the leaders of the household. And women were even encouraged, if there was no son in the family, to marry a man and bear him sons, build his household. So sons were the main focus. Men were the leaders. Men were everything. And women were just kind of, you know, the ones who gave birth to the sons and took care of them and grew, helped them grow. So, of course, the Bible notes that um, Judah's wife even had sons, three sons. You see, Tamar, as a young woman, was most likely... Um, grown up and encouraged to um, prepare herself for the time when she would soon have a household and she would bear sons. Um, 
and I feel like even though the scripture didn't say that we can just kind of assume that a female at that time would be eager to have sons to kind of earn a merit or gain credibility in, in some sort of sense and um, um, Tamar first marriage with Ur um, did not go well she didn't have any sons by him because he was wicked and he died that's what scripture says her second marriage with um, Onan did not go well because he didn't even want to give birth to a son to dedicate to his oldest brother so she didn't have any kids by him either and then he died too so at this point Tamar's in a stage where she's like yo I am I've been married twice and I don't have any kids and I'm gonna look like a trash wife I'm gonna look you know crazy in the streets <laughs> but I'm just gonna I'm not going to be the woman who uh, my parents have have prayed and desire me to be I'm not gonna be the woman who society wants me to be because I can't have kids I'm not having kids I don't have a son so let's continue so verse 12 some years later Judah's wife died after the time of mourning was over Judah and his friend Hira the Adulamite went up to Timnah to supervise the shearing of his sheep someone told Tamar look your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep so Tamar was aware that Sheila had grown up but no arrangements had been made for her to come and marry him. So she changed out of her widow's clothing and covered herself with a veil to disguise herself. Then she sat beside the road at the entrance to the village of Enam, which is on the road of Timnah. Now catch this. She, Tamar was aware that Sheila, who was the last son, her only hope, her last hope, um, had grown up, but no arrangements had been made for him to, marry, to come and marry her. See, this is... Some, this is something she did out of desperation. Like I said, her only credibility or her only merit in this world will be to give birth to a son and build a household. She has three chances and two out of three are nullified. They're eliminated because they're dead. So her third chance, she knows is grown. She knows he's prepared to have, chil to, to have children to marry. She knows he's of age and yet nobody has come up and said, hey Tamar, come back down and marry me. Sheila's down there waiting for you. No one has said that. So she does something out of desperation. Let's continue and read. Judah noticed her and thought she was a prostitute since she had covered her face. So he stopped and propositioned her. Let me have sex with you, he said, not realizing that she was his own daughter-in-law. So how much will you pay to have sex with me? Tamar asked. I'll, and then Judah says, I'll send you a young goat for my flock, Judah promised. But what will you give me to guarantee that you will send me the goat? She asked. What kind of guarantee do you want? He replied. She answered, leave me your identification seal and its cord and the walking stick and you are carrying. So Judah gave them to her. Then he had intercourse with her and she became pregnant. Afterwards, she went back home, took off her veil, and put on her widow's clothing as usual. Later, Judah asked his friend Hira, the Adulamite, to take the young goat to the woman and to pick up the things he had given her as his guarantee. But Hira couldn't find her. So he asked the men who lived there, where can I find that shrine prostitute who was sitting beside the road at the entrance of Enam? We've never had a shrine prostitute here, they replied. So Hira returned to Judah and told him, I couldn't find her anywhere, and the men of the village claim they've never sh had a shrine prostitute there. So let's stop there. <clears throat> so Tamar, desperately wanting what she believes she deserves, desperately wanting what she believes has been promised to her, she does something a little sketch, okay? She obviously goes and pretends to be a prostitute and sleeps with her father-in-law, um and successfully is pregnant, we'll see as we move on in the scripture. She does something a little crazy and a little um, desperate and a little bit anger infused. You know, sh how she was acting wasn't righteous. I feel like we can all somewhat relate to this scripture because at one point in time in our lives, we've all done something that's crazy, that's wrong, that's unrighteous, that's whack. <laughs> we've all done something because we feel that we deserve a certain thing, because we've been encouraged to have a certain thing, whether it be grades, whether it be a man, whether it be children, like in Tamar Sense um, case, whether it be sons, we've all done something crazy to get what we feel we deserve. So let's just skip to verse 24. About three months later, Judah was told, Tamar, your daughter-in-law has acted like a prostitute, and now because of this, she is pregnant. Bring her out and let her be burned, Judah demanded. But as they were taking her out to kill her, she sent this message to her father-in-law. The man who owns these things made me pregnant. Look closely. Whose seal and cord are walking stick and walking stick are these? 
Judah recognized them immediately and said, she is more righteous than I am because I didn't arrange for her to marry my son, Sheila. And Judah never slept with Tamar again. And we're going to stop there for now. We see that clearly, like I said earlier, Tamar has done something crazy. She's done something crazy because she feels that she deserves a certain thing. She feels that she deserves sons. So she did something that was very extreme in order to get and and feel justified and feel like she is going to receive what she has been promised and as i was saying when we apply this to our daily lives sometimes we do things that are a little extreme and we know are wrong but we do them because we say you know what i deserve this i've been promised this i've earned this and i deserve it now so i'm going to do this and i better get what i deserve we you know we can all kind of relate to that and after the deed is done that's when the realistic feelings start to settle in. That's when you start to feel guilt. You start to feel um, ashamed. You start to feel outcasted, rejected. Shame is out on her family that she acted like a prostitute and slept with her father-in-law. You know, it's not easy and it's not something that was celebrated. Scripture did not say that they were happy she was pregnant and her family was woo woo rah. That's not what happened. She was about to get burned. She was about to die because it's not okay. That, that isn't okay just like when we do things and when we're done doing them we're like oh, like why did I do that you know I was so wrong um, uh, it's things are never gonna be the same I've messed it all up why did I do that why did I do that we can all relate to feeling like that when the time came for Tamar to give birth it was discovered that she was carrying twins let's skip now to verse 29 but then he pulled back his hand and out came his brother what the midwife exclaimed how did you break out first so he was named Perez then the baby with a scarlet string on his wrist was born and he was named Zara and yeah that is the end of chapter 38 genesis chapter 38 so the thing is when we start to feel rejected when we start to feel outcasted when we start to kind of settle in with the fact that what we've done is shameful what we've done is unrighteous sometimes our mind starts to play tricks on us we start to feel like we're unworthy we start to feel like because we did one thing or numerous things that were so wrong you know god's wrath is going to be on us for the rest of our lives we are never going to get anything um, we've messed it all up our children are doomed everyone's just doomed tamar didn't do what was right she didn't act righteously and this video is not to encourage girls out there to clothe themselves like tamar and to you know be deceitful in a sense but the video is to kind of show that even though Tamar had an incestuous child with her father-in-law, even though Tamar did something extreme, even though Ta Tamar did something that was wrong, her sons were not killed, her sons were not cursed, her sons were not, were not deemed trash. In fact, the lineage of Jesus Christ continues on through the twins that she had, through Perez and through Zara. The lineage of Jesus Christ continues. God could have said, you know what? Tamar messed it all up. She was supposed to have a kid with Shayla or she was supposed to be whatever, whatever. And she messed it up. I'm going to just impregnate a new woman, get a new woman pregnant with that guy. And um, we're going to start out over. Okay, Jesus, you'll come through her, not her. God didn't do that. God literally continued the lineage and that without the twins obviously then certain sons wouldn't even be there because you know sons after sons after sons after sons God continues the lineage he continued his work through this lineage to end up with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is kind of like the, the ultimate destination and the end the best end result we could possibly have and that continued through Tamar's sons moral of this story is and the purpose of this video is to kind of show you that when god has a purpose it could be over your life it could be over your kids lives it could be over somebody else's life 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 who you know when god has a purpose nothing can ever cancel that purpose out when god says something is going to happen when he decrees when he promises when he builds a covenant over your life over your children's lives nothing can cancel that out nothing so when we as sinners as you know as much as we try we still sin and we still fall but when we accept that okay you know what I can fall but I'm gonna have faith that God's gonna continue his work in me when we do that that's when God even gives us more that's when he pours more purpose into us it's that faith inside of us we can't sit here be and sulk and be sad because we've done all these horrible things and oh my gosh you know I did this now God's not gonna bless me I'm doomed I'm, I'm an outcast forever I'm this I'm not that's not how it works we need to stand up and rise again and have faith you know Tamar when she found out that she slept with her excuse me when she slept with her father-in-law when everybody found out 
they were like, yo, you're getting burned. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, she could have been like, oh my gosh, like, it's over. <laughs> like, they found out. I'm done for. I'm going to die. Oh my gosh. She could have done that. But she spoke up. She knew what she did was wrong. But we can assume th through the scripture that she had faith. She had faith that she would be justified. That what she deserved, and as, in a sense, what she had been promised, would come to pass. She wasn't scared. She wasn't like, oh crap, they're going to burn me. I'm done for. She spoke up and said, you know what? I did this. And I did this and I did this. And at the end of the day, God controlled the situation and continued and and drove through that lineage with purpose. We need to realize that when we do wrong things, when we fall, we aren't ruining God's plan. You know, I'm not encouraging you to go out there and sin. But when we do fall, we can't just be in that mindset that we're done for, it's over. We can, we can only try to be perfect. We can only want to be like Jesus. We can only want and desire and walk in righteousness. But of course, we are sinners by nature because we're human and we're evil. And we're going to fall sometimes. But when you fall once, don't take that as, yo, I fell, I'm done, I'm going to hell. No. Stand up again and say, you know what, I fall, I fell. But I believe in a, a, a faithful God and what he promised is going to come to pass. Um, 15 in verse chapter 15 verse 8 of first Thessalonians says that um, give thanks to the Lord for this is um, the will of Jesus Christ concerning you that's the thing when we go through things sometimes we're like oh crap you know two of the husbands died I'm not gonna have kids God why are you doing this 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 to me why are you ruining my life why are you making me an outcast and we do things like that but we have to give thanks to God because this is the will of God this is his will concerning me this is that was Tamar's will concerning that was Tamar's will through God Jesus Christ that was the will of God on her life so instead of sitting there like, ah, oh, crap, I'm going to die, I'm going to hell, it's done, it's done, it's over, give thanks and believe that, you know what, I felt like Tamar, I did something a little crazy to get something that I believed I deserved, but I'm going to stand up, I'm going to confess the truth like Tamar did, and I'm going to believe that God's purpose will never be altered, will never fall, and his promises will never be broken because he's the same God. If he did it before, he can do it again. He's the same God who, who did all that in Sodom and Gomorrah, who took the Egyptians out of slavery, brought them out to Israel, who, who did so much. He's that same God. So I believe that, yes, I've fallen, but I'm going to rise up because he's going to continue his work in me. He's going to continue to meet me with purpose. That's my interpretation of T Tamar's story. I hope that you can all um, apply something and get something from this story and apply it to your lives. Um, and there's more to come. I'm going to be doing different videos on different women of the Bible. And, you know, go ahead and read Genesis chapter 38. See what you can. Also learn from it what God's going to reveal to you through his word. And, you know, share whatever you are um, passionate about or whatever you believe. So that is my video. I hope you all enjoy and stay blessed and just know that God is a faithful God and whatever he says will come to pass when God says, when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no, when Jesus say, anyway, <laughs> bye you guys, love you all and subscribe, bye.